Well, it fit, when, when you ask that question, what does it take uh, that long, right? So you say, um, understanding the human brain. I mean, it's extraordinarily complex, so I think it would be magical thinking to say we're going to be able to understand it overnight. We don't actually have the tools to understand that level of complexity, but what we can what understand. Tools? What tools don't we have? For example, I mean, I uh, right now, in terms of immersing into the human brain, brain imaging technologies have been fundamental because they have enabled me, for example, to now inquire and have someone using brain imaging to actually identify what circuits are engaged when someone, for example, tries to solve a mathematical puzzle or when someone reacts to an unexpected um, reward. I can use imaging and delineate of the parts of the brain that are activated. And in fact, by contrasting those activation patterns on a normal person versus someone that's suffering a disease. For example, someone in, in the case of drug addiction that's addicted to the drug, when I expose them to the reward and by comparing a normal person versus an addicted, that difference can start to delineate to me which systems may be disrupted. So I can focus and try to understand exactly, for example, how drugs are influencing that system and why some people become addicted and others do not. But that is um, at the, the basic of how we do research, imaging. But the imaging tools that we have are limited. So for example, one of the most uh, transformative uh, tools that we have is magnetic resonance imaging, because it allows me not only to look at how the brain activates, but actually how different areas of the brain are interacting, dialoguing with one another. The brain is a network of network. It's the most complex network that we think it functions, but millions and millions of uh, communications that are occurring between neurons in different areas and close by areas in a dynamic changing way. With the MRI technology, we can look at these communication patterns, but only are limited right now to a very slow temporal resolution. So I can look at these patterns every 10 seconds. Or I can look at areas of the brain that in the spatial resolution are also very limited, that, that contain millions of connections in them. So my, my restriction, I'm restricted to looking at connectivity patterns that reflect these low processes. And at the same time, I'm restricted to small, poor spatial resolution. So imagine what it would be if I could improve that temporal resolution so it's no longer an issue. And I can, and much at millisecond, because the communications of neurons is at millisecond levels, and yet I cannot capture that. So it's like you are trying to do a film and you can only film every 10 seconds. It sounds frustrating. But, but the problem is everything is relative in life. And by the way, we have an area of our brains that actually is responsible for that notion of when they ask you how valuable is this for you, it's relative to what? Yes, and the orbital frontal cortex is serious. We've identified what area of the brain is important in assigning relative value. But I say it because, yes, it says very frustrating, but for us where we could never really inquire the human brain until it died, this is extraordinary. Mm. It's extraordinary. So yes, you can say it's frustrating at one level, but at the other one, there's so much to learn with these tools that even have such limited resolution. And the uh, speed of discovery with these current tools is extraordinary. So we've learned so much more about the, how the human brain is uh, organized and, and interacts and processes information in the, I would say, past 10 years that before in, in hundreds of years.